Hey, Helen, what's going on? Rob Sestrino, uh, nice to talk to you. Very sad to see you go out of the game, but happy to talk about it a little bit here uh, with you. So talk to me about that tribal council. Uh, did you think that there was any chance that it wasn't going to go your way going in? There's always a chance. Um, there's always a chance of Survivor. You never think that you're definitely going to have things go your way. Um, but I will say I didn't see it coming. I didn't play my shot in the dark. I didn't do a lot of things that I could have done. Um, so I thought it was probably going to go my way. But, um, you know, you're never sure of anything on Survivor. So from your perspective, what happened? Why did Carson want to work with the other side when it seemed like that you and him and Sarah had something good going on? I know, right? What a trio we could have been. Um, yeah, I think what happened is there's probably a bit more paranoia around that birdcage than we saw in the episode. Carson was very, very convinced that I had the idol. And I think he went to Jam Jam, he went to Carolyn and even Sarah and said, I think Helen has the idol. I think Helen has the idol. Um, he had a lot of ideas about my body language when I dumped out my bag. Yeah. Like that, that seemed to point to the fact that I had the idol. I did not, obviously. Um, and I mean, that's part of it. I think the other part that probably was a little bit left out of the episode was that both he and I actually knew that Sarah didn't have her vote. Yes. Um, so when you think about the numbers there, you know that you're now in a majority three that has two votes and it becomes a very compelling case to switch alliances and kind of flip on, uh, the alliance that we were in. Talk about the body language a little bit because that, you know, he <laughs> felt like that he had done this kind of research, but ends up making a, a bad read is like a little bit of knowledge about a subject, kind of a dangerous thing on Survivor. I think, I mean, it can be a dangerous thing, right? Like you want to trust your gut, you want to trust your instincts, but there is so much stuff going on out there and little things like crossing your arms or pouring out the contents of your bag too quickly that can mean everything or that can mean nothing. So I don't blame him for going with his gut. Like if I did have the idol, he would seem like a genius. So, um, you know, I unfortunately didn't, but okay. you know, I get it. <laughs> so you all knew that Sarah didn't have her vote. So were you expecting it to be a two, two tie or did you think that jam jam was voting with you? We were optimistic that jam jam would vote with us. We knew that he had an, a, like a tight bond with Carolyn. He played it off pretty well that like, even though he had this type on, we kind of thought that he might be playing it more of like anyone but me game. And we wanted to make him feel like he was in the numbers. And he did a great job of making us feel like he was with us too. I don't know if you remember, there's this one scene where it's myself, Carson, Sarah, and Jam Jam. And we're like talking around tribal. This comes earlier in the episode than it probably did chronologically. And he's basically like, we're fine. Everyone knows the plan. No one gets paid. That was like, literally like as we were heading out to the boats, minutes before tribal so if anything like stuff like that really made me feel like okay maybe we do have jam jam um but obviously uh the 2-2 two -two split was also something that was on my mind as a possibility did you all talk it through if it was a 2-2 two -two split of potentially going to rocks and how that was all going to play out we did we didn't discuss it that much as a possibility because we were really trying to get our plan a to work yeah um and obviously we wanted to figure out like a way to not go to rocks and not have to go through all that. So we did discuss it. We didn't discuss it that much in depth, but we did discuss it as a possibility. Okay. Let's talk about the birdcage because it was such a big deal in the episode. Damn bird what cage. was your working theory of what happened with the birdcage? In terms of when we found it empty? Yes. What were yeah, you thinking so during that time? I was skeptical for a number of reasons. It looked very empty for sure. Um, it looked like it had been fiddled with. I think there had been a couple times where we had woken up and it looked different than the night before. And we weren't sure if it was like us, if it were producers, whatever it was that were messing around with it. It made me nervous um, hearing everyone so sure that it was open because I was almost scared that they were trying to lull me into this false sense of security of like, oh, it's gone. Like no one looked for it anymore. Someone's clearly taken it. So I was both skeptical and just like nervous because I knew I didn't have it. Um, I was hoping that Carson or Sarah had it and they were just being a good survivor player and not telling me. Um, but, you know, obviously that wasn't the case. Why was Carolyn ruled out as a suspect so quickly? It seemed like that everybody just was like uh, talking about everybody that was in the conversation, but it seemed like that nobody was looking at Carolyn. 
Yeah, so that one scene where we're, the four of us are at the birdcage and it kind of looks like Carolyn had just like, you know, taken the stuff out or put it back or and it wasn't and she wasn't there. She was actually on a walk during that time. So we were we were suspicious of really everyone. Like it, I don't think that the edit showed us being suspicious of Carolyn, but we were suspicious of everyone. I think for Carolyn, what worked really well to her advantage is she seems like she's so open and so unfiltered that we yep. kind of had this idea of like, okay, if she had it, I feel like some of us would have an idea. And she did a great job of hiding it. Like kudos to her. So I think that brought her down in terms of our suspicion. I was a little surprised based on what we saw from Tribal Council that the birdcage wasn't a big topic of conversation at Tribal. Did you all end up talking about that with Jeff at Tribal Council? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. We talked about it a little bit. I don't think it was a big topic of discussion. Our Tribal was actually much quicker than I expected. Um, I think it was maybe like an hour or under that. And it was a topic of discussion in terms of the paranoia that it caused. And less so in terms of like who actually had what was in the birdcage. Were you surprised when we saw that conversation between Jam Jam and Carolyn and they talked about, okay, both of us at the same time to say the letter of the person that you want <laughs> to go home. I don't know if there were H's uh, exactly right, but were you surprised that both of them wanted you to be the person to go home? I was surprised that it was me because I think that they probably, I mean, the thing with, our tribe dynamics, I think the second that Bruce went out, it became pretty clear where people had gravitated toward. I don't know if I even had like that many conversations with Sarah and immediately we were grouped together because of, um, we're both like young women, we are from similar backgrounds, we are both like in professional industries that are very similar. Um, so we were grouped together immediately. Jam and Carolyn also kind of had that thing going on too. Like they were clearly a duo, they were tight. And Carson was pretty clearly in the middle. So. I'm not surprised they went for one of me or Sarah. I'm kind of surprised they went for me because yeah. I think it was common knowledge, actually. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it was common knowledge that Sarah didn't have her vote. Um, we did. I think there was one day she woke up and that little slip of paper that says you lost your vote had mysteriously gone missing from her bag. And she had told me and Carson already. So I think at that point, everyone in our tribe knew that she didn't have her vote. And yeah. she could have an advantage, right? Like she went to the island. She came back. Right. Um, we didn't know for sure, but she could. My great podcasting colleague, Shannon Gus, had a Twitter thread about this this morning. Why put the votes on you when we saw that Sarah had, uh, potentially lost her vote, also uh, might have had an advantage? Uh, did, did Sarah seem like that she had more connections with the other players? That's a good question. And maybe that that is like what pushed it over the edge, that she just had a better social game and was more in with Jam and Carolyn. Um, I think part of the reason is probably that they were so convinced. I mean, not Carolyn, obviously she knew who, who had the idol, but they were, at least Carson was quite convinced that I had the idol and he thought that because I didn't tell him as an Alliance member, I was being untrustworthy and things like that. And I mean, if you think that someone has the idol, you want to get it out as quickly as you can. So um, I think that probably played into it, but you'd have to ask them. Yeah. Okay, so Helen, you along with Carson, you did a great job with that savvy task. And did that not earn you any goodwill that you were able to win the supplies for your tribe so quickly? I guess not. <laughs> What's up with I that? Think, I know, right? Freaking Tika. Um, mm -hmm. I th yeah, it's. I think it's tough because like every single season that we've seen in the new age that has these sweater savvy challenges, um, every tribe has succeeded. Yeah. So I think it like doesn't earn you that much goodwill. I almost feel like it hurts you if you just don't succeed. Um, and you don't see it in the edit, but it kind of looks like I like jump up immediately. I'm like, I'll do it. I love puzzles. But everyone was super tentative um, to put their hand up. And I get it. Like you don't want to put yourself out there early in the game. So it was a, after a lot of hemming and hawing that I was like, you know what, I'll step up. And I think it, when you're in the game, you come in being like, okay, I'm going to play down my threat level. I'm not going to like volunteer for puzzles and put myself out there. Like, like you um, know, not to <laughs> in today's modern era game. But I think once Bruce went down and all of this stuff just happened, like literally second one of the game, I felt like I was just trying to survive. Like I was just trying to get anything that I could for our tribe. So we couldn't go to tribal council because I was already thinking ahead, like maybe that's my detriment. I was already thinking to the long game, like who am I going to surround myself with and merge and stuff like that. Did Bruce's evacuation change things uh, for you and your game? 
Yeah, I think it, I think it definitely did. I mean, our first day was really, really emotional. Um, I think him going out of the game, he was someone that all of pregame I had been eyeing. He was wearing Boston shirts. I'm from Boston. I was like, I think me and this guy can work great together. I think I said it in some of my pregame interviews too. And he was the strongest guy in our tribe. And not to disparage my tribe, I don't think we were physically the strongest Mm -hmm. tribe to begin with. So for him to go down, like immediately, not even make it to night one, that was someone that I really wanted to work with that was gone. That was someone that could have pushed us in some of those challenges to victories that was gone. And it just felt immediately like we were like working from the bottom. And I think when you go into survival mode like that, a lot of your instincts are just like, let me do everything I can to push this tribe to victory so I can, you know, succeed and like surround myself with people I can actually work with down the line. And that sometimes isn't the best case scenario. Why was Carolyn the vote target for you and presumably Sarah? Yeah, I I don't think I actually was the first person to put Carolyn's name out there. Um, I really wanted to wait until someone else had floated a name and I forget who exactly put her name out there first, but someone had said Carolyn. I think for myself, what made sense for me is that Carolyn seemed to almost immediately not trust myself or Sarah. And I didn't get the sense that she ever really wanted to play the game with me. Um, And I mean, I hate the like, keep the tribe strong mentality, but in these like, tiny tribes of like five people it becomes really crucial that you have people that can contribute in challenges and in challenges she always had a little bit of difficulty like um with some of the different physical parts or like puzzles and stuff like that so that was one piece of it but the the bigger piece really is that like I knew she had no intention of ever playing with me Mm -hmm. and I need to surround myself with people that are options for me to play with yeah We've seen so much of Carolyn and her personality on the show. <laughs> does, does that correspond with what your experience was like out there in Fiji with Carolyn? She is such a bright light of like, oh man, she's the greatest. Like what you see on TV is exactly what she's like in real life. I will say the only thing that is different is that she is so savvy in those com- confessionals and she's really good at playing that part down in real life. Um, she has like, a zany shield or whatever you call it where she just like is wackadoodle and you think that like she might not be able or like she might not be as strategic as she clearly clearly is so that's the only difference everything else is exactly what you see you seem so devastated uh when you gave your final words about how you were trying so long to get out there and have this survivor experience do you have any regrets about your survivor experience Oh man, Rob, I was very devastated. Also, I would like to add, I didn't know at that point whether Sarah actually was with me. So in my head, I was like, oh shit, like my whole tribe just voted me out like four to one essentially. So very, very devastated. Um, I think you can always, hindsight's 2020, there's always going to be regrets. Um, For myself, I think my biggest regret in terms of gameplay is probably just not trying harder to ingratiate myself with each and every single member of my tribe from like day yeah. one. Um, I think by like day three, when I learned that uh, Sarah had lost her vote, it had already be- become quite clear to me that like, if anyone, Carson was the one that has inroads with Jam and Car- uh, Carolyn. And I would have loved to be in that position or put myself in that position, that didn't happen. Um, but I think I made, you know, the choices I could at the time with the information I was given. So. I don't want to think back and look at regrets, but that would probably be the biggest one. Yeah, it's tough in these small tribes, but you seem like that you really know the game well. And I think in almost any other circumstances, I think it goes differently for you. But it was so nice to get to talk to you, Helen. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. Okay, all the best outside the show, okay? You as well. Bye.